if you don't buy a house now, you'll probably never end up buying a house. And this is a statement I'm telling you with a lot of things in mind. If you think about the world right now, more and more wealth and resources are getting concentrated in the hands of a select few people. I came across this term called asset economy, which was extremely interesting and which kind of was giving the idea that you are now really living in a society where you are kind of purely focused on having assets and the more assets you have, the better you can live, the easier your life would be. The people who are earning normal salaries, they will simply never be able to compete with people who already have a lot of assets. Because if you think about it, you're having some people who are having, I don't know, 20, 30 uh, real estate. And um, all of these are income generating real estate. So let's say they're having around 10,000 euros, 20,000 euros of real estate uh, income per month. Now, these people never really have to worry about buying new real estate and so on, because whatever kind of expenses they have, this income will take care of those expenses and the rest of the money is simply going to keep on accumulating for them to buy more and more and more real estate. And I'm talking about all of this without including the fact that, that you are not taking a loan at all. So at that stage, let's say, for example, you have different tendencies, people who end up taking loans and then there are people who don't take loans at all. So I'm talking about the scenario where when even they don't take loans at all. So if you think about all of this, then it is going to be more and more difficult for normal people to think about purchasing houses and having any kind of place to either stay themselves or rent it out to somebody. Because if the asset prices increases so much, for example, like just a story with Germany, right? In Germany, um, Alina's mother, she bought a house and that was um, around 450,000 euros. This is in Germany and the house is not as big. And if you compare that, with the house that we bought in Denmark and the very first house I've never shared the numbers before but the very first house that we bought was just like 40 43,000 euros again in a horrible condition so of course you cannot really compare one house with 2400 square meters other house with just I don't know 400 500 square meters 400 500 square meters is the one in Germany for 450,000 euros the construction was very different our house was in a much worse condition where I'm staying right now. And we had to invest over 180,000 euros to make it nice so that you can live it, live in this very comfortably and so on, right? But does it mean that like, if you are not able to buy anything right now that you should always just think about taking a loan and um, I don't know, get into debt for the rest of your life or something? I don't know. You have to decide this completely on your own because this is going to be something which comes uh, on individual scenarios. If you're 100% sure that you're going to stay in this place for the rest of your life and your job is not really connected to some kind of fluctuations which makes you move from one place to the next place and so on or like there are no other like you know external factors which might want you which might make you move from one city to the next city. I think it makes us it makes so much more sense to have your own place because to me, rent is really just like you take the money for your rent and you can just take the equal amount of that money and you can put inside your toilet and you can flush it every single month because rent adds absolutely no equity in whatever kind of like net worth you want to build. It is absolutely meaningless to me. Rents, I'm not a huge fan of it because it really doesn't help you in any shape or form. And even if you take a loan and you are taking the loan for your own private house or even better you're taking a loan for some investment property where you're making a net positive from there I think that's a very positive thing that you can do because I'm honestly telling you that it really looks to me like it's going to come a stage where normal people most of the people they are not going to be able to afford any kind of houses apartments things like that and the only option that they're going to have is going to be just renting it from the people who have a lot of houses. If you take a look at the developments in Germany alone, right? So I was taking a look at this chart where it was uh, 2004, um, the index, they're, they're talking about the index of like uh, real estate prices. It was 100 at um, in quarter one, 2004. So let's say January. And now quarter four, 2022, like it went down, but the peak was right before the interest rates went up. Interest rates went up around December 2021. First quarter of 2022, it was still having like double the price increase in the last 18 years. Whereas if you take a look at the income increase, you're seeing the income increase of just like 47, 48% or something. 
I find this a crazy gap because for people who still don't understand, of course, like, you know, we talk about these things so much in our day to day life with families, friends and so on that I got the house prices have increased so much. Everything has increased so much. And like, you know, things are not affordable anymore and so on. And that's why like people just like say, yeah, like, you know, buying something doesn't make sense right now. But I really feel like, you know, I think this is really the stage right now at this moment when you have to start thinking how can you get yourself at least one place where you where you can stay at where you can live at yeah with this i want to come to the second chapter of this video and that is not buying ridiculous things right um just as i told you in the starting like the house that we bought because we had no money alina was making what um i don't know 1500 euros 1600 euros something like that per month and my business was very unstable like some months i would make like you know two three thousand euros one month I made 7,000 euros at that time and other months I'm just making like 500 euros, 400 euros. So what we did was, because in Germany you also have very high taxes, what we were doing was uh, every single month a specific amount of money we are taking out from the bank as cash and we are putting it inside our safe. We will have a safe, a physical like you know locker in your bank and take the money out cash, put inside the safe. Now of course the safe is only insured for 2,500 euros of things but uh, we had a lot more money inside. I think like we had 20, 30,000 euros, like no, not 20, 30,000, 20,000 euros for sure we had lying inside the safe. But we take our chances that of course, like, you know, it's not going to be broken into all of these things. So those were difficult times, 20,000 euros uh, we had there. And then I think around some similar amount we had uh, in the Bauspa uh, Vertrag at that time, so Bauspa Konto. And we couldn't take the money out from the Bauspa Konto. And that's why I made a video about this, like, you know, why Bauspa Konto is the absolute, like, you know, horrible shit that you can do in Germany, but every single bank pushes you for it because of the crazy high provisions that they get for them to sell you this Bauspa Vertrag. I made a completely detailed video about this, how all of this works, so you can take a look at that. So till the time that money would have come, it would have been um, very long and we might have not been able to buy the house. So we took some money from the parents, we returned the money to the parents afterwards. Uh, once the money from the Bosch bag came and everything was great. So the first house that we bought as normal people who are making, let's say, around 3,000 euros, not even 3,000, like my income was not equal to Alina's income. Alina was making more. I was maybe, let's say, 2,500 euros of netto income per month. We ended up buying a house for 43,000 euros, right? A shitty, like, not, I wouldn't call this house shitty, but it, it, it was in a horrible condition. It definitely had a lot of work done right so that's the first thing like first thing that you have to remember is like if you are in a specific place and you have the opportunity of moving to another place where you can still afford something of your own i think that's a good uh, decision or good idea to think about if the quality of life doesn't decrease that much and so on you don't have to buy the property in the same country in the same city in which you're living at right now right because this property that you're buying even cheaper, this property could be used as an investment property. Keep this in mind. So you have to come to a stage where you start thinking a little bit more globally, right? Now, what do people do in these kind of scenarios? People do this that they're always thinking about uh, things that they're more familiar to, right? They're more familiar to the real estate prices, the real estate um, conditions, things like that in their own hometowns right so maybe if you're coming from india you know india better if you're coming from italy you know italy better spain and so on right like you you know your own home countries better than you would know some random city that you're investing in or random country investing in how our journey went was the first house that we bought that was a business property and we were able to do bed and breakfast there that was uh, really nice um, because we were not really thinking that you should get a property first to live on your own because we still need some income right like at that time i told you that our income was extremely low so our idea was that we the house had two sides we are going to stay on one side of the house and we're going to take care of the guests and things like that who are coming on the other side of the house so buying a duplex is a very smart idea if you can do that where you can stay on your own too and you can have other side which can be rented out so first property was business property Second property, again, was a business property, which was uh, a studio apartment uh, in Bucharest. Again, 99,000 euros, 99,800 euros. Now, if you think about all of these prices, I'm telling you, these are not German prices, right? Like, because you guys might be expecting that, oh, like, you know, he's a millionaire, whatever, and he must be having properties, 500, 800,000 euros, things like that. Absolutely not. I never inherited any kind of money. 
So all, everything that I built up, saved, things like that, it was all my own money that I was earning, right? I was like saving it and I was like thinking about the better places to invest in. That's why it's extremely important to remember that maybe just directly going for the 500, 800,000 euro house that you're thinking about, it might not be the best idea. Maybe you can think about something more reasonable from which you can, I don't know, start building yourself up. The next um, apartment I bought was 165,000. The one I bought after that was almost 200, 207,000 each. So two, two of them I bought. Then afterwards, we did the down payments of two of like 183,000 each. So these are three room apartments which are getting built right now. So we already made two payments of, I think, a total of around 200,000 euros we have paid right now and 160,000 euros is left. And now comes the last one, which is the private house that we bought now. So if you think about all of this story, like the private house now we are buying after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. After eight properties, we are buying a private house. And even there, we are having the idea that maybe we are going to, because it has like many separate buildings, that maybe we are going to like turn one area into something which could also be rented out into Airbnb. None of these prices that you see are the crazy numbers that you are getting used to in Germany. The 300, 400, 500,000 marks, we are not seeing that. So my property ranges are always like around like, you know, 99,000 to 200,000 because the thing is like at this range, if you want to like sell something, you can also sell something very quickly because there are other people who do not feel this price range to be like completely off the top. If you're now buying something because we also had friends who bought like apartments and things like that for a million euros or something now, till the time you find somebody whom you want to sell this 1 million euro apartment to, that's going to take a lot of time. But for example, when I want to sell one of these apartments, for me, it is not going to take a lot of time, right? So the second um, lesson is essentially from this video that if you are not really finding it comfortable to buy a property or something in your own area where you're living in right now, because the prices are too high, maybe you can also think about your home countries. For me, I did not want to invest in India because I know the bureaucracy is absolutely insane. I just do not trust the system that well. Um, but Romania for me was like, okay, like if I get lawyers and things like that, it is still in EU. So I have some level of trust there. Even though Romania had also some kind of like surprises for me every single time I was doing something like sometimes people scamming, things like that. So I had to have like now it is a stage where I know good people who can help me out in different kind of things. At that, at that stage, when I was starting out, that wasn't the case. So for me, that place where I could like still afford good properties at uh, decent prices and good rental yields and so on was Bucharest. Like that worked out really well for me. I know people who are doing the same in Croatia. Uh, I know people who are doing the same in Slovakia and so on. So like people who know their countries and they know their real estate, they don't have any kind of issues with language, things like that, or they can arrange with the help of a lawyer or something those people are doing actually really, really well in this scenario because they are again not falling into the trap that, okay, I have to buy an apartment in Germany. I have to buy a house in Germany. I have to buy a house in like, you know, whatever country you're staying in. But they're like, okay, like, you know, if I'm not able to buy something here comfortably, it makes so much more sense for me to buy it in a place where it's still going to be a reasonable price for me. And I will not feel like that I will... I don't know, I will not be able to sleep at night, right? Because some people, they take some kind of loans, something happens, they take such loans that they're not able to sleep at night then. So you should also not fall into that scenario. Another thing that you will realize is that like once you have these kind of properties or something, the feeling of responsibility grows so much more that you think about like what are the other things I can do to like, you know, uh, increase my income, think about buying more properties, things like that. So all of that is a very nice uh direction. These are a few thoughts that I had to share with you because I see a lot of people right now who are still super comfortable renting out the places. I don't think that's a very sustainable thing to do unless like your parents or grandparents are going to inherit you hundreds of thousands of euros, especially if you're thinking about having children, things like that, like that they are not going to have a stable home or something in the future. I think like that's going to be something that you would want to give to your children too. I think like this, because in the future, I feel like it's going to get a lot worse. Of course, people always talk about like, you know, the population decreasing, dying and things like that. But if you think about it, um, you also have like certain communities and certain like um, uh, countries where like the population is like 
really increasing rapidly. So I still um, have difficulty believing the idea that there's going to be a stage where like so much of the population dies off that you have all of these like empty houses and empty apartments where no nobody wants to live and there's going to be absolute crash of the real estate market or something. I think that is not something that you have to at least think about in your um, life at this moment like you know next 40 50 years i don't think that's a concern that you should that you're supposed to have previously in germany uh you were having good rental prices and you were having like decent salaries so that's why you never really had to worry about like you talk to people and they're like why should i own a house when i can just rent it and i can be completely free i get that idea i got that idea at the time when everything was great things are not great right now interest rates are high borrowing uh, money is high you have to see like you know if you still want to stay in a state where you will be quickly affected by the increase or decrease of rental prices or you want to come to a stage where you're like okay like this is my private house this is my investment property whatever things like that and i can um, still lead, uh, lead a comfortable life and i will still have something where i can stay and spend my old age in because you don't want to leave your old age into a big question mark because your old age is going to be the age where you're going to be the most vulnerable and most impacted by different kind of changes which are going to happen in the world right so you want to control as many factors as possible which are going to make you a little bit more secure in the old age i hope this helped you a little bit because um the main idea is that you really have to see where you want to build your equity build some kind of assets because assets are slowly going to get to a stage where things are going to be simply um, priced at a level which are going to be out of your reach. So do you want to wait for that stage or do you want to do something about it right now? These are my thoughts. I hope this helps. If you have any kind of questions whatsoever, write down in the comments. If you want to speak to me, link is in the description. I will see you in the next video. Bye.